Hello beautiful creative friends, it's Belinda and I'm back with another new process video to share with you today. Today I'm documenting some photos from my birthday earlier in this year and as you can see I have reused this cut file, this is from cut to you I've backed that off camera and I have made the little star at the top into a shaker pocket using some sequins that I've had in my stash for quite some time. The collection that I'm using today is from Uniquely Creative, they are an Australian company if you're not familiar with them and this is their summer holidays collection I believe it's called it is travel themed and holiday themed but I am using it to document a birthday story I wanted to go for a pastel color scheme here and so I've selected products from the collection that meet that design aesthetic and what I'm really aiming for is texture 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 so you'll see how I achieve that as the layout comes together I've got three photos. This is sitting at the table with my family and the birthday cake that my kitties made for me with some help from my mum. And I've backed each one of those onto some white cardstock to add a small border. And then I've created a strip by adhering those down onto some vellum. And the vellum's just going to add a little bit of softness behind those photos. As I said, I've grabbed a whole bunch of different pattern papers from the collection that are in these really soft pastel-y tones and my plan is to create a strip of them running horizontally across the page which is what my photo is going to sit on. So I've used my notebook border punch to punch the, one of the pieces that's going on the right hand side. I do have a little piece of vellum there which is from the, uh, it's a vellum page insert set that came in the collection and the piece that I've turned into a tag over on the far left there I'm pretty sure that came from a journaling card which was also available in the collection. So the height of these is about a half an inch taller than my photo strip and I just trimmed roughly trimmed them down first and then I've laid them across the page in the order that I think I'd like them to go used my pencil to mark where each of them is overlapping and then I've trimmed the excess off and the reason that I've done that is because I wanted to add some stitching to each individual piece and I just knew it would be way too annoying and tricky to try and do it once they were all adhered down on the page so just showing you now I've added some a row of stitching around each one of those pieces and then I'm going to well no I'm not going to adhere them down yet because I wanted to add a little bit of texture to the background so I've got my primo light modeling paste which is my favorite texture paste to use at the moment it's just really soft and pretty and it has the added bonus of drying really quickly and this stencil it's like a confetti design and this is just from like a cheap discount store um, I'm pretty sure I got this from red dot here in Australia and I've added it in a couple of different places so I've added it under where I'm gonna where I'm planning on building some or two my, my two main embellishment clusters so that that's now the photos are now adhered down to that strip and as you can see I've just added a piece of chipboard this is just something that came with some packaging because I want to give this photo strip a little bit of lift off the background but I'm really trying not to add too much bulk to my layouts these days I'm sure like many of you storage at home is at a premium and the 12 by 12 albums they do take up quite a bit of space so I really want to make sure that I am getting as many layouts as possible in to those and the way that I'm doing that is by making sure that my layouts aren't too bulky. So I've used some wet adhesive which as you can see was really hard to get out of the bottle to adhere that down and then the title is going down with some foam. Now this is from this is foam that I get from Bunnings in a very large roll here in Australia. It is acid free so I don't have to worry about it causing any problems long term on my layouts. The downside to this is that it's really hard to get the backing off. So I did only add it to the foam to the the actual letter pieces because I have made that star into a shaker so that's already got some dimension to it and I'm using my t-square ruler just to make sure that everything's lined up nice and straight and that it's centered on the page I've got this little um, scalloped border piece which I'm pretty sure came from one of the cutter parts and I want to tuck it in underneath the photo layer but I want it to stand out a little bit so I'm going to grab 
these really cheap foam squares, which um, look, they are fantastic. They're, they're tiny, so they're a good size. They're not too thick, but getting all of the backings off them can be a little bit annoying because they don't come off really easily, which I suppose is a good thing um, because they're not going to, um, they're not going to sort of, the adhesive's nice and stiff. Um, sticky but it's annoying pulling all the pieces off so that's what I'm going to do now and then I'm going to save you the trouble of watching me trying to get that tucked underneath in just a moment and I'm going to cut ahead cut ahead to when that is adhered down because it wasn't quite in the right place there so that's now down now I'm going to start to build my embellishment clusters and as I said I'm going to have two main clusters one to the top right of the page and one to the bottom left of the photos these pieces that I'm sticking down here this one that says documented and the one up the top that's pink and says good times those were actually already layered pieces that came on a journal card and I fussy cut those out and when I saw them, that was my reason for wanting to create these two main embellishment clusters. Um, in hindsight, I do wish I hadn't put an embellishment cluster up to the top right of the page. I think once it's finished, it's it's not really necessary and it adds a little bit too much busyness to the page. But I'm not completely unhappy with it. So I just thought I would mention there that things don't always end up the way that we envisage them. And this little documented piece here, I, I do stick it down, but in the end, I end up pulling it back off and starting again. And the reason for that is it's just too bold. The black and white stripe and the orange in the little banner piece, they're, they're too bold and they, they don't suit the rest of the layout. So it's just drawing, drawing the eye to them a little bit too much, which is not what I wanted. So again, adding, looking at adding some texture, I've used a doily from my stash. I've trimmed that in half and I've added it underneath the piece to the top right and then added it to this little cluster on the bottom left here. And then just to adhere to the rule of threes that I like generally like to stick to when I'm embellishing, I am going to create another small little cluster just to the top right of the photo strip. So right now I'm sticking my journaling down. I have used my typewriter to type that up and then cut it down into strips. And then I'm just using my wet adhesive to layer those down in strips. It's my absolutely my favorite way to add uh, journaling to any page. I'm creating my little date piece, which is I just used an old Felicity Jane rolling date stamp and I've hand cut a tiny little tag from some of the pink pattern paper that came in the collection. Now I'm going to go and add some florals, which I love. I love using florals in my layouts and in my embellishment clusters. This is one of the good things that I like about Uniquely Creatives collections is that there are always lots and lots of florals. Um, they come in the... Uh, ephemera packs and there's always one or two sheets of patterned paper that come loaded up with florals that you can fussy cut so that's what I've done with these ones these florals are all fussy cut out from I'm pretty sure they came from the six by six paper pad for this one because I wanted them to be just a little bit smaller in size and I'm going to tuck I've tucked one in up on the top that cluster on the top right of the page and then off camera here, you can see I've skipped ahead a little bit. It just, things just weren't quite working. So I turned the camera off and had a bit of a play. I've pulled that documented piece up and I've rebuilt that cluster just using a couple of florals and that circle die cut that says happy, happy, joy, joy. You can also see that I've added some twine to the tag on the left hand side. And I've also added some twine to this memories banner piece that's going to sit onto that top right of my photo cluster tying a bow which never really goes very well for me I don't know my fingers just get a bit clumsy and I have to sort of play with it a little bit now to ha to attach this date tag I've added some twine to it and I'm going to hang it over the top of that little memories piece there it takes me a little while to to figure out how to do it so i'm i was going to hang it and in the end i'm just going to tuck it behind and add some a good dollop of wet glue there which will hold it in place and then under the tag i'm going to add one of those little foam squares just on the end of it and then adhere that down and that just stops it from 
floating around too much on the page and kind of keeps it where I want it to be but the twine's still um, a little bit loose and has some organic looking movement to it. So we are just about done. The only thing that's left for me to do is add some little sprinkly bits. So the first sprinkles that I'm adding are these tiny little florals which were in that 6x6 cut about cut apart pattern paper but I saved myself the trouble of painstakingly um, uh, hand cutting those out and I've used the We Are Memory Keepers punch tool that has a little floral shape and I've just punched them out with those and then the final finishing touch is adding some sequins now these are the same sequins that are in the little the, the little star shaker on my title so I'm just going to dab or place a couple of those some of those around the layout in place of my usual Nuvo drops that will just about finish it for this layout there are some close-up photos coming in just a moment I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and if you have I'd love for you to go ahead and leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed I'd also really love for you to hit that subscribe button and join me on my paper crafting adventures for now though I will leave it there and say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day